this is an old Bryce 5 scene that I've brought into Bryce 7.1 and what I'm going to look at doing is converting this scene into something that looks like a pencil sketch and we'll do it just the, the simple way to start with then we might look at more complex options later on so the first thing to do is turn the priority up to high because uh, as it's imported from Bryce 5 it'll only come in at normal the next thing to do is to turn the atmosphere off and holding the alt key down click on each of these in turn so that it disables them we'll go in to the Skylab and disable the sun because we're not going to need a light source and that more or less deals with the sky except to turn the atmospheric color to white so that's how things are looking now you'll see that there's still some orange blobs here and that's because of ambience response within the material but we're going to modify the material and so that will no longer be a problem so we'll select all the materials which will use this option here rather than using the families so that's every material selection and then modify them so we'll reset the materials to default grey set the diffusion to zero the important thing to do is set the specular halo to full brightness because this channel specular halo being fully white also doubles up and controls one of the premium effects the uh, reflection level of reflection blur when you uh, engage that effect and the other thing we're going to need is reflection for that to work with so 100 uh, percent reflection and fully white specular halo now we'll go into the render options select premium effects reduce the rays per pixel because we actually want this picture to be slightly grainy select blurry reflections so that works now with the specular halo um, channel to set the reflections to their maximum blurriness uh, we'll set the maximum ray depth down this will stop the rays from bouncing around in the scene too much and uh, reduce the render time check that uh, it's remained on the screen because of Camtasia Studio uh, when you're running Camtasia Studio alongside Bryce it causes this problem so I just hit escape to get rid of that box and now render and uh, it'll take a little while because of all the reflections but uh, once it's complete it should look a bit like a pencil sketch so I'll just uh, let that render out I'll pause the video okay that's rendered out and uh, as you can see it looks a bit like a pencil sketch the, the graininess caused by the low rays per pixel um, simulates uh, you know the, the the fairly soft dark pencils so th this was a quick easy way and as you can see it's been fairly effective but we have lost quite a bit of detail in the picture where it was provided by the material properties rather than the geometry so all you're seeing at the moment is the effect of this material on the geometry so we can actually raise our game a bit and do better than that so let's restore this scene to where it was so we'll revert to saved and we'll begin again by turning the atmosphere off setting it to white knocking out all these other bits and I'll go into the Skylab and disable the sunlight so we should be more or less where we were last time with the lighting and we've still got that bit of ambience coming through the material there but we might not want to lose that so if we look at the ground plane which I think is family 5 and you can see that it's quite a complex material and but the things that we we need to retain only are the bump height because that's adding the detail to it and we can uh, not worry about this diffuse so if we get rid of the diffuse we turn the specularity down the metallicity down and once again spec set the specular halo right up we'll have full reflection so we've got reflection and bump working together so you can see it's not just a simple sphere anymore we also need to remember to set our render options up premium effects 36 blurry reflections lower the ray depth again um, I don't think we need reflection correction it's really relevant for what we're doing here but uh, it's quite a complex feature that so we won't worry too much just turn it off for now 
and we should find, you can see it's quite a slow render because of the, all the metaspheres that make up the shape of the ship, that now we're getting a bit more detail in this surface. <laughs> actually made that much difference. I was hoping for uh, something a bit more dramatic than that. Let's have a look at the material again, what we've got on bump height. I have reconsidered this altogether. I know, we'll, we could drive the reflection channel instead of the bump and see if that gives us more of an effect. Alright, uh, yes, that's that's worked. So now we're controlling the level of reflection since the, uh, the bump wasn't doing very much for us. The other thing we could do is consider the role of reflection correction in this while we're at it. So we'll go back to putting the bump in. I'll take the reflection back up to 100. We'll go back to our render options and go for reflection correction and see if that brings out more of the detail in the bump. No, it doesn't. So what we're finding here is that the degree of scatter from the specular halo is negating the changes in bump height. Also we've got to consider what our own legacy bump. Okay, we'll, we'll experiment with lowering this value so it's not scattering as much and see what effect that has. Alright, we're not scattering as much so now we can see more of the effect. Obviously that might reduce its effectiveness as making it look like pencil but it's, we're heading in the right direction. So we'll set this up at uh, say 200. It'll give us a bit more scatter. Right, so there's a, a couple of different ways in which you can bring out the pattern then from a material surface that has bump. The other thing we ought to consider, I don't know whether I like this option best of all, but we'll see how it pans out. I'm going to drop that again. One, two, seven, that's about halfway, isn't it? So I wanted this, uh, that strong shadow, so. The other thing to consider, as I was saying, is ones that have a transparency. So has this got a transparency in the material? Yes. So we need to retain the transparency, but we also add the reflection. I'm not going to worry about bump height for this one. It'll only slow things down, so we'll set the bump to zero. We don't want diffusion or ambience. We do want reflection, which we've got, and we need the specular halo to be set up. So we'll set that up at maximum there, and we'll see In there you can now see that the transparency setting has been retained. Now if this is part of a group um, that have all got the same material on then you can you could select the lot and make the modification as I just did just then so whoops no fraction keep the set down to zero so we could get uh, several things modified at once. So that should now have done all the ones with that particular transparent material on. So we now we've got a way to handle bump and also transparency and then what I'll do is I'll do that for the rest of the materials in this scene which is going to take a few minutes so I'll pause the video and then we'll see what the effect is. Okay this is proving a bit more fiddler than I anticipated but I think it's been worthwhile. What I have done, I've settled on the ground plane, I've used metallicy effect to bring in some of the colour from the diffuse channel into the reflection and I've set the specular halo up at about 200 so it's not too much of a focused reflection for the ship here if that is then the material for that I've used 50% metallicy to bring some colour in and I've set the specular halo right up uh, this the back end of the ship is got some uh, transparency set so that uh, allows the metaball blending which will be why it's taking quite a long time to render as well as a reflection and it's a premium effect. I also found that I hadn't got um, this selection in a channel of their own and they are another material with holes in so they have to be separated off which you know it's just adds time. So those are the changes I've made just to balance out the overall um, 
pat pattern, the grayscale pattern, because I wanted a bit more weight at the top of the image and didn't want it to be too dominated by what was at the bottom, because essentially it's a triangular design. So here we've got the preview, and I'll let it render out, and uh, it's probably going to take, um, let's see how long it reckons it's going to take. Well, about six minutes, so I'll pause the video again. Okay, as you can see, that's just about rendered out. Uh, the the overall composition then with the weight and this is forming this triangular shape here, very s simple, um, seems to work. So um, I didn't want the, it to be overbalanced by this being too dark, which is the risk. And the uh, the use of metallicis also brought a slight hint of blue into the greys, which uh, which I also like. So now that's rendered out this lower resolution. We'll save the file use save as and because I used um, a 1 after the first title then it, it gives me a 2 automatically which is a nice feature in Bryce and now I'll, I'll render this out at a larger, larger resolution which may take some considerable time but uh, yeah, that's generally the, the whole process in a nutshell really just have to, uh, to make a few choices and try it out at low resolution you know, or nano preview um, small areas if if like this it's, it runs quite slowly because of the metaspheres take quite a bit of processing power large number of reflective objects in the scene and using premium effects so uh, don't be surprised if this takes a while to render on your machine okay then